Within modern Christian circles, it is not uncommon to be reminded of the imminent and unexpected return of Jesus. Quotations stemming from references to Christ arriving like a thief in the night, to eschatological views arguing that the signs that precede the return of Jesus, having been fulfilled, are often given to those who would question such basic teaching of modern Christianity. Anyone who would merely suggest that Christians will not be surprised by the return of Jesus, that is, not taken like a thief, are treated with apprehension and disdain. Much of this attitude arises from presuppositional commitments to a particular view, of which the majority of views, despite their differences, agree upon this one thing. In the case of the stock standard dispensationalist, Christ's return is imminent due to the rapture of the church being the next event within prophetic history to take place. Likewise, because the historicist maintains that any signs leading up to the return of Christ have been fulfilled, this means that Jesus could return at any moment. The common phrase often espoused by the theologically inclined is that Jesus could come back today, even at this very moment, so we must be ready. The notion that Christians should remain ready at all times for the return of Christ is a commendable remark. After all, Scripture argues in many places that it is such a mindset that will see someone delivered, such as in Matthew 25, 1-13. So, you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him, Matthew 25. But watch yourselves, or your hearts will be weighed down by disposition, drunkenness, and the worries of life, and that day will spring upon you suddenly. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who remains awake and clothed, so that he will not go naked and let his shame be exposed. Revelation 16, 15. Being ready for the return of the Lord is certainly something Scripture emphasizes, and I would not dare argue contrary to this. However, what does it mean to be ready? And is it really true that Christians are to be taken as a thief or surprised by the return of Jesus? Allow me to tackle the first question, as it should assist with comprehending a correct understanding of the second. As the previous quotation makes apparent, being ready is akin to not being weighed down by the dissipation, drunkenness, and the worries of life. To be ready for the return of Jesus, the day of the Lord, is to be walking by the Spirit. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh, for the flesh sets its desires against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. Ready is to be like the faithful and wise servant, who stands in great contrast to the unwise servant. The contrast here consisting of a servant who beats his fellow servants and indulges in evil with the wicked, as compared to a wise servant who gives food to others at the proper time. Matthew 24, 42-50 to put this simply, the one who is ready is the one who continues to refrain from sin and walk in faith. The one who believes and bears fruit from his faith is the one that is prepared for Christ's return. And the one who indulges in sin, who does not have faith, and so their fruit is rancid, this is the one who is not ready for the day of the Lord. This same theme is found in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, where he reminds them to live a life that is pleasing to God. 1 Thessalonians Paul, with great jubilee, draws attention to the fact that this is what the Thessalonians were doing. 1 Thessalonians 4, he encourages them to excel more and more. We would do well to take to heart what Paul so earnestly encouraged within his letter here to the Thessalonians and elsewhere. And we would do even better if we were to recognize how this theme of readiness ties into the thief and the night motif. Paul, extending from these instructions to the Thessalonians, desires to remedy any ignorance that they may have. Verse 13. And so he informs them of the hope that they share, the hope of the coming of the Lord. Verse 15. And the resurrection of those who sleep in death. Verse 13. Paul explains to the Thessalonians that by the word of the Lord, verse 15, anyone who remains alive until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who have fallen asleep. Verse 15b. The Lord will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will be first to rise. Verse 16. And after this, those who remain, the living believers, will be caught up together with the resurrected dead in the clouds. Verse 17. Paul then moves on from remedying their ignorance to reminding the Thessalonians of things they do know, theology they are in no need of schooling. 
1 Thessalonians, that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, verse 2, that while people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape, verse 3. To pause here for a moment, I would like to highlight that this scripture clearly teaches that those who are surprised like a thief in the night, as ultimately those who do not escape destruction, those who are startled by the arrival of Christ, are those who proclaim peace and safety, and as a result are destroyed. This should cause all who maintain their own lack of insight, referring to themselves as the ones to whom Jesus arrives as a thief, to pause. Is it right to see oneself as within this group of people? A similar argument is made by Christ against the scribes and the Pharisees, where they claim that their fathers were those who shed the blood of the prophets. These teachers unwittingly testified against themselves by claiming to be the children of those who murdered the prophets. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You build tombs for the prophets and decorate the monuments of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partners with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves that you are the sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of the sin of your fathers. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape the sentence of hell? Matthew 23, 29-32 In a similar vein, those who see themselves as the unsuspecting, the ones to whom Christ will come like a thief in the night, they place themselves among the unprepared, a dubious location to place one's footing. Paul's comments continue and only serve to solidify the concern above. Now about the times and the seasons, brothers, we do not need to write to you, for you are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and security, Destruction will come upon them suddenly, like labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you like a thief. For you are all sons of the light, and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not sleep as the others do, but let us remain awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet of our hope of salvation. The contrast that Paul draws out here is between the prepared and the unprepared, the unbeliever and the believer. On one hand, Christ will come like a thief to those who are in darkness, those who are ignorant, that is, disobedient and sleeping. These are the ones to whom Jesus arrives as a thief in the night. But on the other hand, to those who are considered as brothers by Paul, that day, the day of the Lord, will not come like a thief. Paul could not be clearer here. While modern theologians and believers continue to place themselves within the camp of the surprised, Paul claims that those who are sons of light and sons of the day will not be surprised like a thief. In other words, Christians will expect the return of Christ and will not be surprised at his arrival. But how is this so if there are no remaining signs for the Christian to look to in anticipation? The fact is that while most modern eschatology subsists within the doctrine of imminence and surprise, the scriptures deny such thinking, the implications of which are wide and deep for modern theologians. The historicist who sees all signs or leading indicators to the return of Christ as being fulfilled has found himself within a precarious situation Likewise, the dispensationalist who maintains that Christ's return could happen this very second inadvertently couples themselves with those who have nothing left to look for. The vast majority of believers see themselves as being taken like a thief in the night because their presuppositions demand such a sentiment. After all, with Christ being able to arrive at any moment, with no signs left, how can the Christian be unsurprised by the return of Christ? Admittedly, each of these views, as expressed earlier, maintains a readiness and promotes a lifestyle of walking in the Spirit. However, their insistence of being surprised is something that Jesus also denies, where he suggests that Christians, while being unable to know the exact day and hour of his return, nevertheless will know that the time is near when they see the signs. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near. Remember then what you received and heard. 
keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will. Both Paul and Jesus see Christians as being unsurprised, expecting the return of Jesus because they see all these things. Their expectation and readiness is an informed one based on signs given by Jesus and Paul within the context of each of their respective deliberations. In the case of Christ, it is the particular signs within the context that become the leading indicators. For Paul, the Thessalonians will not be surprised like a thief in the night because they are awake and sober. That is, they were not ignorant of what to look for regarding the times and the seasons, and were expecting people to announce peace and safety as the destruction closed in. The Thessalonians had things to look for that would tell them that the day of the Lord was near. Furthermore, how does one know that the time is near if one has nothing to expect preemptively? Indeed, who can obey the command of the writer to the Hebrews when one has no idea just how near the day of the Lord is? Let us not neglect meeting together, as some have made a habit, but let us encourage one another, and all the more, as you see the day approaching. This reason, among many others, that I reject most modern eschatology. Their emphasis on imminence, a lack of signs or leading indicators, and insistence that Christians are in darkness because of these things is unscriptural and, being some of the necessary implications of their theological presuppositions, is an irreconcilable and therefore disqualifying factor.